All right, today we're going to be doing a overview of the uh, 2011 Grizzly 550. This is the power steering model. It's an automatic, as you can see there by the shift lever on the left-hand side there. We've got it up on the left. I'm gonna show you a couple things and I'll take some plastics off so you can see uh, inside the machine a little bit better. Uh, but to start, we're gonna start on your left-hand side. Again, this is your shifter. Uh, you've got high, low, uh, neutral, reverse, and then park. And I'll show you how to engage that park uh, here when we drop the four that off this lift. Uh, we're gonna go over here to the uh, left side here, and this is where you're going to find the VIN number. It's gonna be a little bit harder to see, um, but your VIN number is right. It would be kind of in front of your left, uh, left toe there, right on the frame, right down below. You've got a radiator hose here, and then down below it, you've got the VIN number. You got your upper and lower A arms there. We've got your uh, CV boot for your drive shaft here, and this four-wheeler has been um, it actually came out of the back of the four-wheeler. So there's going to be some pieces missing. The body's going to be beat up. Uh, front headlight here, and you're going to pull this rubber cap here to replace the bulb when that time comes. Bumper, again, pretty beat up uh, due to the crash, but um, motor and everything runs good on this four-wheeler. We've got 12-inch uh, uh, rims on this four-wheeler. The front or a, um, a six, six inch by 12-inch rim. These are aluminum. This is the stock rim on this model. This is power steering. And so we've got your power steering uh, motor right here. And you've got your uh, steering stem that goes in um, to this motor here, just right above this motor. Uh, we've got your front differential and I'll show you how to um, change oil on that. We've got uh, the fill mark is going to be here. That's where you put the oil in. It's also how you check it to make sure that it's full. So if you wanna just periodically check that, just pull that uh, 19 millimeter bolt there and make sure you can feel oil down in there with uh, your finger or see it. When you're filling it, you just wanna fill it so the oil is starting to come out that uh, fill hole and then put your cap back in, you're all set. We've got an Allen bolt down below there and I'll show you. It is just right there and you've got an Allen they are a little bit of a challenge to get out sometimes, so what I like to do is put a uh, put the Allen socket on there, and then take a hammer and tap it. Sometimes that kind of breaks that uh, free tap on the Allen wrench itself, so you don't damage the the actual uh, drain bolt, and sometimes that'll loosen that up. I've uh, got your A-arm guards here. Make sure those are in good condition because that is supposed to save these boots here. If you've got any kind of rips or tears at all in those boots, you immediately get that taken care of or you will, um, you will have issues uh, very, very soon, have to replace that drive shaft. We've got your clutch cover on this side, 10 millimeter bolts around that cover holding um, that cover on, and if you need to replace that belt, um, pull this cover. I'll show you how to do that in a separate video. We've got your brake lever here. These larger side panels um, that are here are fairly easy to take off. Uh, not a lot of bolts. I don't actually think any actual bolts on these, just other plastic pieces you gotta take off. And then they've got tabs like this that kind of sit in around the edge here. We've got uh, our power outlet here, and that is got power when it's turned on. And so you can hook a, um, a light up to it, maybe an air compressor, small air compressor, uh, stuff like that, but it's not gonna have a ton of power uh, to run anything too large. Ignition switch here, we've got a dry storage here, and this is completely sealed up when the cap is on it to um, keep anything in that uh, housing there uh, clean. On this side, you're gonna have your uh, spark plug. Sometimes it's easier to take this cover off to get to this, but you can get to it right here. And so this is gonna be on the right-hand side, so your spark plug's gonna be about your shin on the right-hand um, leg and it's gonna be back right on this uh, cylinder head, and you're not gonna be able to see it there. There's your exhaust manifold there. And you're not gonna be able to see from the angle that we are the spark plug, but it's just right uh, past my finger there. I've got the, the right hand wheel here. These are an eight by 12 inch rim, and you can see here on this CV boot what I'm talking about. That's got a rip in it. We need to replace that boot uh, immediately. I've got your tail light on the back here. And it's also gonna be your brake light and that hooks up to your brake pedal that I showed you a little bit ago. Uh, for your rear differential, we've got an Allen bolt on the bottom here. It is gonna be a six millimeter Allen and I'll take you down there 
and show you where that is drained out of. It's gonna be up there a little bit farther. So grab your uh, six millimeter socket, uh, Allen head, and same thing, tap on that a little bit to uh, loosen that up and then drain that oil. Fill bolt is gonna be here and then your oil check to see how full it is is gonna be, uh, I might be able to see it better. You might be able to see it better from over here. Your fill, fill plug is gonna be here. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. You can see it there on the right hand side of your rear differential. 10 millimeter bolt, when oil starts coming out of that plug there, put that plug in and you are full. Don't need to keep on filling it. That's, that means you're going, your oil level is gonna be about right here and that's enough to lubricate your rear differential. You've got uh, brakes on either side in the rear and they are a disc brake, hydraulic, and um, so they should function uh, very, very well as opposed to uh, cable operated brakes or drum brakes. So check those periodically. I'll show you how to replace those brake pads uh, in a separate video. Again, we've got A-arm guards on this side as well. Uh, CV boot guards, some people will call them and uh, they protect those, it's supposed to protect those CV boots. It doesn't uh, take care of everything, but it's supposed to help. Got your exhaust manifold on the back here. That's gonna be a stock exhaust pipe on there uh, to add performance. A lot of people will switch those out. Uh, this is a utility four-wheeler, so um, not a lot of people will beef these up, but that, that is possible, and exhaust is a good way to do that. We're back to the left-hand side of your four-wheeler where we started. We've got your oil fill here, and it's also your dipstick. So you wanna check, when you're checking your oil, you wanna make that, start that four-wheeler up, uh, let it run for a minute or two, shut it off, let it sit for a minute or two, and then check the oil on your dipstick. And uh, to get a proper reading, you wanna push that dipstick all the way in to um, so see where it shows up on the dipstick. And then your oil filter is uh, kind of right behind that VIN number there. I showed you where that VIN number is on the left-hand side. Your oil filter is gonna be behind that, um, obviously attached to the motor and it's back there. And I can get those if you are looking to buy a oil filter and some oil. Uh, your drain plug is gonna be a uh, 17 millimeter and it is, if you leave the skid plate on, it's the larger of the circle holes on this skid plate. I like to pull skid plates when I change oil because when you remove that oil filter, you're gonna have oil drained on, down on that skid plate. It's gonna drip for uh, quite some time. So I just like to re uh, remove that uh, skid plate, just a handful of bolts and you'll have that off. And I'm gonna lower this um, lift now so I can show you the dash assembly and some other components of this video. And I said this four-wheeler was um, fell out of the back of a pickup or was wrecked, um, removing it out of the back of a pickup. So the handlebars are severely bent and the racks are, plastics are beat up. Uh, we've got your gas tank right here. This is where you fill it. So just a turn cap and uh, it's under this lid here. We've got your four-wheel drive over here on your right-hand side. It's a click button. You can put it into four-wheel drive uh, while you're going. I don't suggest uh, spinning your tires while you're putting in four-wheel drive, nor do you want to go be going very fast. Differential lock on the other hand. So, so we're in two-wheel drive now. You can see right there, you won't be able to push this lever over when you're in two-wheel drive. Push it to four-wheel drive, and uh, you will push that red knob down, and then you flip this over, and then we've got four-wheel drive is, is engaged already. And then to put it in, uh, turn the differential lock on, you hit that yellow button. That'll, it won't allow you to move that switch back over because it doesn't want you to switch it back and forth while you're going down the road or spinning your tires. I like to make sure that those tires are fairly straight when you're putting it in differential lock as um, if you're spinning or tires are really turned, you can uh, cause some damage there. I mentioned that we had uh, hydraulic front and rear brakes and here is going to be the master cylinder for those front and rear brakes, or for the, this is for the front brakes, but uh, we've got your high and a low fluid level there. Just keep an eye on that so you don't run that dry. Uh, and then that lever's on the right-hand side. Your rear brake lever is gonna be on the left-hand side. It's also hydraulic, so keep an eye on that level as well. Get your lights, 
you've got off, low beam, high beam, and then you've got your starter button here. This is a, a run switch on off there. It's kind of an emergency shut off. Um, make sure your four wheeler won't turn over if this is in the off position, and that's a common mistake. Uh, we used to get these in all the time where guys wouldn't figure out why it wouldn't start, and it's because they switched this off or somebody else did. You've got a override button here. What this override button does is in reverse, you are limited. If you are wanting to go 75 miles an hour in reverse, I wouldn't suggest it, um, but you would hit that button there uh, and you've got to hold that button in for, for you to be able to go fast. This forward won't go 75, but you could go as fast in reverse as you do forward if you hit that override button and hold on it. They do that as a safety precaution so that kids don't get on there, hit reverse, and um, go, or adults won't go um, very fast in reverse. We've got your, uh, like I said, your ignition switch by your uh, right hand knee there. We're gonna turn that on, and you can see there your, uh, our differential lock is on. So diff lock, that's flashing, and uh, as soon as we hit this button here, you can hear it disengage. Differential lock light is off. We'll flip that over. Four wheel drive, you can see is in that four wheel drive position now. And hit that four wheel drive button, it takes that uh, four wheel drive symbol completely off of there. So differential lock is if you're uh, just completely stuck, we, you don't wanna just drive around in differential lock. Uh, you will wear components very, very quickly and it is not good to be turning sharp corners or um, running high speeds with a differential lock on. To uh, change from hours or trips, uh, your buttons are over here on the left-hand side of your dash, and you've got your hour meter and your clock here, and we've got your odometer and your trips A and B on this side. So then you can set your clock with this center button here, or and reset your trips. Uh, underneath your seat is a couple things I wanted to show you. To remove your seat, you've got a uh, lever in the back here. It's a white covered colored lever and you just lift that up your seat will come off and we've got um, your your fuel tank. This is all fuel tank here. It flows down um, where I showed you here. This is all fuel tank and this is your fuel pump. We've got special hoses on here so you're not just going to be able to run to Napa and pick up a hose um, that looks like this. You're going to have to special order that. Got your air filter underneath this cover here. We've got two plastic screws to remove right here and then we can just uh, slide this cover off your air filters underneath there. I like to check and replace that every time I change the oil. That is all for this four-wheeler. If you've got questions, uh, let me know. Uh, leave them in your comments. Check out my website for parts. Uh, anything that you need, I can uh, do my best to get for you. We will do more videos on this four-wheeler. Just show you a couple more components with plastics off. Um, that way you can see what it looks like underneath of all the plastic here. Thanks for watching.